Hello friends, happy Monday, um, and happy end of, of, of the novel. I know we're sad to see it go, but um, it, it's been a pretty awesome experience, uh, both for me and for you, I think. Um, you guys have been telling me how great it's been to, to read this book, but I've been telling you an awful lot how much I've enjoyed exploring this one with, with you guys in particular. Um, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. And uh, you guys, hopefully, you're not ashamed to hear it because I'm saying it for a specific reason. I've been really worried about this class for a very, very long time. This, you as seventh graders, um, you just spent a lot of the year not getting it and uh, not following through on your responsibilities, not doing all your stuff. And I think that this book, uh, which talks an awful lot about responsibilities and growing up, which is why I made today's post entitled Grow Up, because that's how you have to say grow up when, I, I, I don't know, that's just how I've always heard the word grow, the words grow up, I've always heard grow up, so I guess that's how you say it, um, but I, I do want to spend some time saying that I've noticed a change in you since we started reading this book, and maybe it's just the, the, the maturity of the year, maybe, uh, maybe you're getting close to the end and you're saying, oh my gosh, we don't have a lot of time left. I really need to kick it into gear, or, oh man, you know, I, I really wanted to make sure I was all set, and I thought I had all this time, and, and now 8th grade's around the corner, and I haven't really been handling my business, but now I'm going to start. Or whether it was the book, or whether, whatever it was, you're starting to recognize exactly what it takes to grow up. And, and I was talking about this in the different classes with you, we had some really good discussions about what does it mean to act like an adult? Because you guys are really in the beginning years, beginning stages. Some of you are taking the first step in the process of bridging the gap between being a kid and being an adult. It's about a 10-year process. In, in my experience and, and, and in the experience of a lot of people, you tend to stop being treated like a kid somewhere around the middle of middle school. But you're fully expected to be an adult when... In like that 20 to 22 year old range, uh, depending on whether you decide to go to a four year college, a two year college, or you decide not to go to college and enter the workforce, become an apprentice somewhere, um, do the vocational studies, whatever it is, somewhere in that realm of 20 years until 22 years old, you start to be identified as a full fledged, responsible, you better be handling your business adult. And you're at the beginning of that process right now. and. We've been talking an awful lot, uh, particularly, um, and, and it's the first point that I want to talk about in this last section of the book that, that we finished up today, um, this speech that, uh, that Stephen's dad gives to the jazz band um, after deciding to show up, and, and he, he does something, and I say, you know, I always say at this time of year, and it just happens to be timed out perfectly for the end of this book and for this speech, I get really frustrated when at the NBA draft or NFL draft or any of the sports when I watch the drafts because the draft is always really kind of interesting to me to see, to see um, where teams go and in what direction. But it's interesting to me how many people still will call these massively in shape and mature and, 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 and developed athletes, they'll call them soft when they hear their name called and they begin to cry and they hug uh, the people around them or they kiss their loved ones or, or whatever and they'll be like, oh, he's soft. We never should have drafted him. He's soft. Because he's crying at a major point in his life that he wants to share with the people who have meant the most to him? I never really understood that. And on page 258 and 259, Dad delivers a speech that I think really represents the true measure of a man. And not just a man but an adult, but obviously Stephen's dad is a man, so I'm, I'm saying this, this notion of adulthood that I believe is what a true man or a true woman is, it's somebody that communicates openly, that is willing to admit when they need help, is willing to admit when they've made a mistake, and is willing to devote themselves to being open and communicating with other people, being willing to thank and appreciate all of the gifts that they've been given, and yet still acknowledge that they have a role that they have to take on as well. And if they haven't, stepping up and saying, you know what, listen, that's on me and I haven't been great, but thank you for being that when I wasn't. 
Go back to 258 and 259. It's, it's too long of, of a, a, a section of text to, to go over and reread again for you here. But, I mean, stuff that he says, like, you know, I, even my wife couldn't get me to come. I was ready to go to work, bury myself in a pile of paper, and just tell myself I was helping the family. But then he says later, I realized that my family needs a father more than they need uh, me to make money. And that's really true. And it's really important, I think, to, to be honest with ourselves and to say, hey, look, this type of thing is really important. And when we approach the uh, afterburn today, which is, as always, below this, um, this video, we said, what major lessons has Stephen learned? There's been a lot of emphasis on, on becoming a man. I'm a man now. A men's journey. I'm... All of these things kind of revolve around him gathering up this sense of uh, how do I become a man and a, one who handles his business and one who is yet still emotionally available and willing to ask for and accept help. That, that to me is probably one of the bigger lessons and we notice it changing Stephen. Um, it, it changes Stephen in that when he is faced with the position of, Jeffrey's sick, do I blow off the rest of this concert, which is probably the biggest night of my musical life ever, or do I follow through my promise to Samantha and go with him? He goes. He takes care of his brother. He handles the responsibility. And the beginning of the next chapter, he says, I missed the highlight of my year because Jeffrey had an ear infection. Thank God. Major shift, and there's our confirmation. Stephen's character has dynamically changed to the point where, I mean, if, if, if he were still an immature, selfish, kind of wiener type of guy, he might have said, I missed the highlight of my year because Jeffrey had an ear infection. What a stupid thing. I, it wasn't even necessary for him to miss this, and now I missed it, and now nobody is... What does he say? He says, thank God. It could have been so much worse. This is a major shift in character, and as we know, as people who understand narrative structure and how the literary elements work together, and how an author uses character and the other literary elements to bring out his or her purpose, Jordan Sonnenblick has very specifically crafted this change in Stephen's character, which should let us know that that change was designed by the author and was purposeful and probably relates back to the main idea when we examine it. Important stuff. And again, we knew that already because we've spent the whole year practicing becoming good readers and you're doing it. And I'm so stoked about it. One last thing I wanted to point out. It just, it, it again, it confirms, you know, these lessons that Stephen has learned on his path toward man-dumb. He says, I think about Samantha. Oh, spoiler alert. Okay? Pause this if you didn't finish reading the book yet. I think there were only four of you who missed class today. Um, but pause it right now. I think about Samantha. She died without a sister by her side, but she also made sure that Jeffrey would live with a brother by his. And of course, she showed me a thing or two. It's funny, I, I used to think that having a brother was the worst thing in the world, but now I know that not having him would be way worse. This exploration and, and, and kind of a way to wrap up our year uh, has been a pleasure. And it's been a pleasure to watch you grow along with Stephen, which is honestly what authors are asking for when they write stories like these. And we're going to explore some nonfiction texts regarding this fiction text from the author, from somebody else interviewing the author, and um, we're also going to take a look at how Jordan Sonnenblick makes his characters so real. Because again, I think that that's why the actor who was doing the audiobook was able to do so much. And that's why you were so in interested and couldn't look away and got really frustrated at the end of the period when you're like, No! I want to read more! How did he do that? What did he consider about his audience that enabled him to craft a character and to craft a story around that character and this family that got you hooked, made you connect, and made you understand just how to become a better communicator, a better person, and really get you on this path towards adulthood. 
I'm excited to continue doing this with you. Um, we're starting our, our um, final project. Uh, I'm going to mention a little bit tomorrow, a little bit more on Wednesday, and then Thursday we're going to be in the library starting it. You're going to be writing a children's book, a non-fiction children's book. So we're going to be able to take this exploration of, of how an author examines audience, and we're going to be able to apply it to something that we're going to write for an audience of children. And that's going to really give us some good practice and leave us at a great place at the end of the year, starting to take that step forward and say, all right, now that I'm responsible and I'm getting on the path toward adulthood, I'm responsible for showing the, those younger than me the way, and I'm going to have to determine my purpose using them as my audience. Such good stuff. It's all coming together. It's all connecting. I'm so excited to talk to you more about this. Have a great day, guys.